A lot of people were also saying he just simply wasn't attracted to her. Let's find out why you guys think that. I have seen a significant amount of comments either flat out saying, hey, I think Ken is gay. I think Ken is bisexual. Ken is giving down low vibes. Hey y'all, it's Nay. Happy Black History Month and welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. This video will contain spoilers for Love is Blind Season 6, Episodes 1 through 9. So if you haven't seen them yet and you don't want spoilers, save this video and come back after you do. Thank you all so much for all of your comments on this video. As I mentioned, I want to be able to respond to as many comments as possible. And the best and most efficient way to do that, short of writing a thousand responses, is to put it in a video. So that's what we're here for. We have a lot to talk about. I basically pulled some of the top comments and some comments that I saw kind of over and over. Basically, the thing, the pressing questions, the things that you guys are leaving comments on a lot. Let's briefly get into this Trevor's ex situation. So if you don't know, there were some text messages that came out a alleged ex of Trevor saying that he was in a relationship when he went on the show. It was supposed to be, you know, just for clout. He had started watching all the old seasons and he was learning how to be the perfect guy. And so he played all this up and that's why we all fell in love with him. Basically, he used psychology on us and was like, I know what they want, that's what I'm gonna be. And that he was supposed to come back home to her. Now, a lot about that situation has unfolded. I have been doing my best to keep up with the alleged ex on Instagram. She posted a open-ended questions box on her Instagram stories and has been answering questions periodically. I'm doing my best to keep up with them. If you all want me to put them in like a Google Drive or a folder so you can access them just in case you've missed them, let me know and I'm more than willing to do that. I'll drop it in Discord and we can go from there. I thought this was interesting. I'm asking her if she had spoken to Chelsea. Basically, Trevor's stance on this right now is complete radio silence he has said not a word on it i don't think he's going to speak on it according to the ex which i don't know if she was supposed to release this information the reunion already filmed this past weekend today's monday she was saying that they were filming the reunion either yesterday or saturday so that's already happened according to what the ex has said and if that's the case then it seems very calculated on her part that she released these text messages right before that listen and i'm not blaming her from what we have seen on her side, it seems he did her very dirty. And that's why I'm kind of surprised that Trevor isn't coming forth to defend himself because he's kind of looking, you know, like the villain right now. <laughs> uh, so we'll see if any of that comes out. I don't know how much truth there is to the fact that the reunion was already filmed, but we will see. So overall, a lot of the top comments was just general disdain for Ken, which I think we all have at this point because what the fuck was he doing? And this person says, Brittany was way too kind to Ken. He took no responsibility for his role in the relationship and his poor behavior. I lost all respect for him. And I agree with this. I lost all respect for him too. One thing that we always have to remember with these reality TV shows is the editing. Did it play out the way that we see in the editing? We always have to keep that in mind, but from what we can see as an audience, yeah, completely lost all respect for Ken. Unless he comes back and say they completely edited that the wrong way which i don't know how he would because the way that he acted was kind of speaking for itself but if he's like they made me hold my phone they made me text any of that comes out then we'll see what happens during the reunion but as of right now kenneth is a great example of the trash taking itself out gaslightalization gaslightalization i sound like i'm country when i say that gaslightalization is real out here <laughs> people like to think that matthew the alleged serial killer in the beginning couple of episodes was the season's villain Woo, child yeah, everybody did think that Matthew was the villain. And we talked about this on live too. It's kind of crazy how the villains have done a complete 180 situation. There is accusations of Jeremy having already been engaged or something crazy like that. Or already had a girlfriend, something like that. I'm tuned in. Y'all let me know if y'all hear anything. A lot of you are still kind of talking about the fact that you don't think AD had the right to bring up the raising biracial children conversation up to Ken. I actually already talked about that in this video and I just don't want to rehash it because I've pretty much already said all my thoughts on it. I also talked about it in my YouTube live last week. So we've kind of gone over that and where I stand. My position has not really changed except for the fact that I'm like maybe AD wasn't the right person but I still don't think she was wrong in asking and in, in bringing that up. So we've kind of already discussed that which is why I'm not going to bring that up in this video. But I did want to kind of let y'all know that I didn't pull that out of thin air and I'm not the only one in the world that feels that way. Other people feel that way too. This person says, none of Kenneth's shifts should be put on AD. If someone asking a very valid question that's relevant to the rest of his life shakes him up that badly, it's not meant for him to begin with. And I wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment. AD bringing that up shouldn't have been, oh my God, my world is shaking. If anything, it was a simple, hey, did you think about this? Now, how Ken let that play out is his business, but 
I feel the same way. If it shook him up that much, then it wasn't going to work out anyway. I also saw this next comment a lot. I wonder how AD would have felt if she had chosen Matthew and Brittany had asked him the same question. So I think I kind of responded to this question and I was saying, well, what do you mean? If Brittany would have asked him if he was going to be okay with a black woman raising a white child, I guess. And I think this comment and other comments like this are kind of missing the point. See, that question doesn't make sense coming from a white person because white people don't have that many disadvantages in America because of race. Now, please listen to everything I'm saying. I'm not saying that there are not poor white people. I'm not saying that there are not disadvantaged white people. What I'm saying is that in America, white people are often not disadvantaged because of being white. So that question coming from a white woman to a white man, like, how do you think this black woman is going to be able to raise white kids? That doesn't make sense because you don't have to worry about sending your white kid out into the world and being pulled over by the cops and being shot on sight. Like, that's not a concern that white parents have overall about their white children. So asking that question as a white woman to a white man about a black woman does not make sense to me. If you want to further explain what you meant by that, then I'm open to the conversation. But I'm realistically, I'm going to just be straight up. I'm standing pretty firm on the fact that a white woman asking a white man if he feels comfortable dating a black woman and having children with a black woman because the children are going to be biracial and can she handle raising a white kid? Yeah, there are going to be things that come up, but those things are not going to be around the fact that, hey, the world is going to look down on you because you're white that especially if it's a white boy like I just it's just not it's just not something that comes up so that's my opinion on that so this person says as someone in an interracial relationship my partner and I discussed all of this at the beginning of our relationship children parents extended family society everything we agreed to handle our own families on behalf of each other so we both feel and are supported when AD brought it up I didn't think it was crazy I didn't think it should have been his wake-up call I think those conversations should have happened in the pods and Ken should have had a response that Brittany and him have discussed this and have a game plan to navigate this relationship. Literally didn't expect that conversation to end in a breakup. That was whiplash. Agreed. And that's where I'm coming from. That conversation with AD should not have been a wake up call. This, these conversations surrounding race should have already happened. Now the other argument for that being made is the fact, oh, well, they're supposed to be in the pods. They're not supposed to talk about looks. Okay, but you knew Kim was black. She could tell Ken was black from his voice. I don't know. I think that he has a very black male voice. So to me, yeah, that's kind of, this person explained it even better than me. It's not that that should have been a wake-up call. That shouldn't have been the first time that conversation ever came into his mind. But from the way that it played out at that mixer, it was perceived as if it was the first time he had ever even thought of that, which leads some of us as viewers to believe that they had never even talked about it which is odd. And I completely agree. Did not expect that conversation to end in a breakup. It's, I'm still like, how did we get here? So y'all know I have on my editing sweater and my editing headphones. So a lot of you were saying, you know, still on my head about the fact that I said the kids were gonna be perceived as black in the world. And I was wrong about saying that because they wouldn't be black, they would be biracial and all of these things. And a few of you mentioned well, I've never seen race be such a big deal on this show. Lauren and Cameron never talked about race like this. It was never a problem for them. Love was blind for them. So I went back and I watched a couple of episodes of season one so I can see if I just didn't remember what they talked about. Maybe love was purely blind. They never had a conversation about race. Right away when Lauren meets Cameron after they have that first kiss, she's talking about how she's never kissed a white man before. This is my first time kissing a white man. I have large full lips and I was scared that the proportion was gonna be like, oh my God, my lips are gonna be a lot for his smaller lips, but he is an excellent kisser. And then when they're on their pre-wedding honeymoon vacation thing, they're also talking about black children. And I love this because some of y'all tried to flame me for saying this. Cameron actually says it, that the world is gonna perceive their future children as black and that's gonna cause a different life for them than if they would be white children. When we have children, or if and when, I mean, I definitely want to. Yeah. But I know that the world is going to perceive them as black. Yeah. And, you know, I know that that's, it's going to make their lives harder in, mm -hmm. in some way. So maybe the delivery sounds better coming from Cameron than me because, yeah, y'all didn't like that I said that, but. I'm putting this in here to show you that A, they did have conversations about race and B, 
it's a very real thought process to think that the world is going to view your biracial children as black because that's a real life thing. So hopefully you all are open to listening to it come from Cameron instead of me. And yeah, it's just something to think about. You all also seem really interested in having a conversation surrounding race and just interracial dating and can you still be pro-black and date out? All of these things, which I'm open to having that conversation, but I want to make a space for that conversation and I'll figure out, I'll be, it's not going to be anytime soon because I really want to think about how I want that to play out. It's a very sensitive topic and it can get heated very quickly. So I want to make sure that I execute it properly so that we can keep it cordial and maybe learn something from it versus everybody just coming in and throwing their opinions and no one actually listening. Because at the end of the day, if no one's willing to listen, then having the conversation doesn't really make sense. So stay tuned on that. Like I said, no time soon, but I am kind of thinking of a way for us to maybe have that conversation. I thought this next comment was pretty interesting because it kind of came from a psychological point of view and like a mental point of view. Kenneth has classic signs of avoidant attachment. After the initial happy lovey-dovey beginning, the minute he finds something that is going to be a challenge in a relationship, he goes cold and withdraws instead of trying to work on it. Then when his partner feels the shift and tries to talk to him about it, he gaslights the F out of her and withdraws even further until she has no choice but to leave. That's the textbook pattern of avoidant attachment. So this is really interesting. I'm not familiar with avoidant attachment, avoidant, mata avoidant, patach? <laughs> I'm not really familiar with avoidant attachment, but let's look it up. Avoidant attachment is an attachment style a child develops when their parent or main caretaker doesn't show or doesn't show care or responsiveness past providing essentials like food and shelter. The child disregards their own struggles and needs in order to maintain peace and keep their caregiver close. What is an avoidant attached person like? As someone with avoidant dismissive attachment style, you tend to find it difficult to tolerate emotional intimacy. You value your independence and freedom to the point where you can feel uncomfortable with and even stifled, stifled by intimacy and closeness in a romantic relationship. So yeah, I thought that was a really interesting point of view on it in that it just got too real for him. So he was like, whoa, let's back up. Something that I mentioned in that video was that I feel like because Kim was on his phone the whole time when they got back, he has spoken to his friends or family. And basically they kind of further drove that conversation that he had with AD, which was, hey, I got engaged with a white woman and how is that going to impact children? That's what I felt because he was on his phone that maybe he had continued that conversation with friends and family and they basically were like, yeah, it's going to be a no-go. This person says, don't think this has to do with Ken's family. Ken has always looked at AD with googly eyes. Now, this is not something that I thought, but a lot of you think this. I saw a lot of Kim and comments i saw a lot of comments saying yeah ken likes ad it's clear you can see the interaction that they had at that first initial mixer which i think was back in episode three or something i don't remember and ken was kind of looking at her and he was black love black love black love what up love this. Huh? look at this look at it's this man. Look, it's giving it's black excellent you feel me? Look at it. it's giving you feel me? Yes, my yes, god <laughs> Yes, How you feeling? So yeah, a lot of you were saying Ken just likes AD and it was very clear that once he saw there was a black woman and he saw AD, he kind of changed his mind. I think that's a fair assumption as well. And then there are people who do feel like maybe it was because of race. Ken didn't want to be with a white woman. You could tell. He was envious of Clay's and AD's relationship. He gaslit Britney, bless her heart. He was always on his phone. He didn't try to give her affection. I don't think he was attracted to her to be honest. Chelsea is so annoying. Good luck, Jimmy. Not Chelsea catching a stray at the end of the Ken, the Ken comment. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people are also saying this, that he just simply wasn't attracted to her. Let's find out why you guys think that. I agree. I think AD planted the seed that grew. Ken did a 180 degree turn on old girl, dumped her, didn't fight for her, and then called his boyfriend and dipped. Now we already know a lot of people are agreeing with that first half, but it's that last part, the latter part of that comment that I want to get into now. Called his boyfriend and dipped. I have seen a significant amount of comments either flat out saying, hey, I think Ken is gay, I think Ken is bisexual, Ken is giving down low vibes, and I want to approach this very carefully. I'm not homophobic, there's no room for homophobia on this channel, but we can bring up the fact that some people think that Ken might be bisexual or gay. I think that's a totally fair conversation, especially since so many people are saying it. Even in the pause, I knew Ken was giving too good to be true. Why? I think he plays for the other team. Now, I'm by myself, but in my opinion, he was trying to use her as a beard. Whatever the case, he did her wrong. I didn't know what a beard was. I had to look it up. Basically, a beard is like a cover person. Say I am, I was a lesbian or I was bisexual and I didn't want people in my immediate circle or I wasn't ready to come out yet. I would have a boyfriend 
as like kind of my cover so that people would think I'm straight. That's the definition that I got. If that's wrong, please someone in the LGBTQ community let me know, but that's the definition that I got when I looked it up. So a lot of people are saying that they think Ken is gay. I will say that this is not something that I initially thought, but the more and more I start, I saw this comment, I was like, well, maybe, maybe I'm missing something. And I also had one of my good friends say that she thinks he might be bisexual or gay as well. So I don't know. I will also say, and I can't confirm that these screenshots are real because I haven't seen any video. I also saw something that said that Ken's cousin or somebody said that he is gay. Flat out said, yeah, he's gay. He's my cousin and he's gay. And kind of confirming that, yeah, he was using this show as a cover because, or he wanted to make his family mad or something like that. I don't know. Again, that's another situation that's still kind of like the information is coming out. So I don't want to speak too much about what his cousin may have said, but a lot of people seem to be on board with the fact that he didn't want Britney. He was never going to want Britney because he's at the very least bisexual and at the most gay and shouldn't have been on this show anyway. Which if that ends up being true is really, really, really fucked up. Because why come in here and waste somebody's time? You're not getting good clout out of it. You're the principal of a school, first off, of middle schoolers. So this is just messy for your career path. Unless you were about to give up being a principal, this is just messy. Two, now you're looking like a fucking asshole on many levels because not only do you look like an asshole for how cold you were to Britney, you're looking like an asshole because if you knowingly went on this show as a gay man, what was the reason? Like, there's nothing in this show that you were going to get out of it. This isn't love is blind, queer love. This is love is blind, heterosexual relationships, and you knew that. So, I don't know really what he really wanted. If he wanted to become reality TV famous, he's doing it in the worst way possible. And then this comment was really interesting because I, I think this is the only comment that I saw like this. I heard Britney actually ended it and Netflix did some editing to make it look like he did. But she allegedly ended it with him off camera based on what he was telling her. Possibility, we don't know. That editing is always crazy. What I do know is, is regardless of if Britney ended it or he ended it, it's still some shit going down on Ken's side. And I'm just itching to get to the reunion because I want to know what the hell is going on. And we may not never know. That's the reality of shows like this is that we as the viewers may not ever get the real story and we have to be okay with that but I really do hope we get the real story and I just thought this comment was hilarious because <laughs> I don't know it just made me laugh out loud maybe Kenneth left Britney for his true love a dolphin did anyone hear squeaking and chirping when he called his friend who by the way was on standby okay this person is hilarious aside from the dolphin <laughs> aside from the dolphin comment I also peeped that his friend was on standby. The conversation with his friend wasn't like, hey, just call in the seat if I can come over. That conversation was, yeah, I just talked to Brittany. It's done, as in the breakup. So I'm about to come through. Hey, what you on, bro? Yeah, I'm about to get myself here. I'm about to be over there. Right. That wasn't the first time they had talked about that. So his friend was on standby. That dolphin stay ready. And dolphins are very smart, so maybe it is a dolphin. Only time will tell. All I know is that if this reunion turns into Finding Nemo, That'll be a whole nother situation. <laughs> this person just got the entire cast together in one comment and I love them for it. Jeremy, sir, just know. AD continues to ignore the red flags. Clay is not ready to be a husband. Laura is a hypocrite because how are you going to call out Sarah but encourage just to contact Jimmy? Chelsea needs therapy. So does Jimmy. Johnny needs condoms. That about sums it up. I don't need to make another video. This person got everybody together in one comment. <laughs> and yes, Johnny does need condoms, which brings us to the next comment because I saw this comment a few times too. Please, people, vasectomies are not meant to be reversed. I don't know where this misinformation started, but it really needs to end. Yes, vasectomies can be reversed, just like a kidney transplant. That doesn't mean it should. It was never designed and intended to be reversible. It's just a factor. The chance of an unsuccessful reversible is very much real and quite high. Don't get a vasectomy with the intention of getting it reversed. If that happens to be what you want later in life, know that there's a chance it won't work because, man, bodies are complicated. I agree with you. Bodies are complicated. And also, thank you all for telling me that they're not 100% reversible because I didn't know that. I thought it was 100%. Like, that's how it's always presented is that they're 100% reversible and that's why it's better than getting your tubes tied, which I don't know if that's reversible or not. But anyway, but particularly related to Johnny, the reason that I say the vasectomy should be on the table is because you would assume that they've already had a conversation about condoms, right? The natural progression of birth control should go something like this. Man to the woman. Hey, are you on birth control? Woman. No, I'm not on birth control. We should use condoms. Guy. Okay, yeah, we'll use condoms or we'll use the pullout method or something like that. But the fact that 
the conversation that we saw, the piece of the conversation we saw went from Amy saying, yeah, well, I'm not on birth control. We talked about a vasectomy. I know I mentioned a vasectomy. I know, I know. I know. And there is, it's always like an option too. Like it's not just like the girl's like job. That means in my eyes that they've already talked about all the other ways to do this. Just as far as like a logical conversation, I would assume that those two things have already happened because no one is gonna right off the bat say a vasectomy. Wow, yeah, okay, they're not meant to be reversed and it shouldn't be an, a, a means of birth control. It sounds like that's what they wanna use it for and that's their prerogative. If they intend on using it for birth control, then that's their business. If we're gonna talk about everyday people, no, of course you don't use a vasectomy for birth control use a condom like everybody else. I also wanted to talk about this. Laura needs to make a public apology for telling Jeremy to essay AD. That is disgusting and microaggression jealousy of how beautiful AD is. What woman in their right mind would tell a man, let alone their significant other to essay another woman, even jokingly, unless they secretly had contempt for that woman? It is beyond inappropriate and disgusting. And when AD confronted her, she gaslit AD and made it seem like she and Clay were being childish for being offended. Laura is sick. Now, you know what's funny? I said this in that initial video. I felt like Clay felt like, so you're asking your man to basically, you know, go do this to my girl? Like, that not be considered SA in some situations? I don't know. And then I recently saw a comment, I don't know if it was on that video or my most recent video saying, you guys are blowing this bean dip situation way out of proportion. And it's exactly that sentiment that leads people to think that joking about it is okay. Because no one knows AD's history. What if she has a history, God forbid, of being SA'd how do you think that would make her feel if some random man came up to her and did that? Like, you don't know. You don't know the trauma that someone is dealing with. So thinking that it's being taken too far, yeah, that could be the opinion, that could be an opinion that you have, but you need to think of it from the other person's point of view. And that's why I stated it the way that I did. Some people might view that as S.A. I don't think that was Laura's intention, and I definitely don't think that was Jeremy's intention, but could it be viewed that way? 100%. So she does need to check that. And I don't know if it's going to come up during the reunion, but we will see. I also saw this next comment a lot. And I think this is just my fault because I wasn't, I didn't really clarify what I meant. I just kind of said it and then moved on kind of quickly. Not defending Clay on many items, but from working in the service industry for years, it is respect to your service and busters that you consolidate place and get them ready for them if you can in most restaurants. If you've never waited tables, you might not know that, but anyone I know that has worked in the service industry knows to respect their wait staff and try to do that if you can. Yes, okay. I saw a lot of comments like this, so I just wanted to address them all in one video. I know this. I was a hostess before for a few years and I also worked at a fast casual restaurant for several years. So I know that it is common courtesy to stack your plates. Uh, by the way, everyone should do this. I always say that everyone should work retail and everyone should work hospitality, restaurant, hotel, something like that, because you really do learn how to really, flat out be a better person in how to treat customer service workers when you do something like that. Um, so I think everybody should have at least one job like that in their lives. I wasn't referring to the fact that he was stacking the plates. I was referring to the way that he was stacking them, doing it in like eerie silence. As AD stared at him, it made faces like, what the hell are you doing? It wasn't that he stacked them, it was the way in which he stacked them. Just wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Cause I hear y'all out there. I hear y'all. I know it's terrible when people leave shit all scattered around. Stack those plates, stack those knives, stack those forks, guys. I want to talk about this next comment because I don't know why AD is out here catching strays because of this, but we're gonna talk about it. The real question is how big is her forehead? Oh my God, what a beast. Let's keep the forehead slander to a minimum. Do you not, are we, hello? Like let's, us big foreheaded girlies have been dealing with that all our lives. We don't need it from you. We don't need it in a comment. We know our foreheads are big. What do you want us to do? Do you suggest that we go back into the womb and size down? Please let me know. No big forehead slander over here, damn it. it, it, it okay, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Even though I know that comment was about AD and not me. I, I caught a stray. Why did I catch a stray? I know that Love is Blind is always full of drama that happens outside the show, but why do I feel like this season is outrageous? Like I mentioned, we have Trevor's supposed ex. Jeremy supposedly had an ex. Uh, Jimmy supposedly had an ex. One of them had a fiance. I don't know which one it was, but one of them supposedly had a fiance. There's a whole lot going on. We are still waiting to find out if Jeremy possibly slept with Sarah Ann, like if Jimmy possibly slept with someone. Who knows what the hell is about to unfold in episode 10 in the reunion? I'm locked in, okay? That's all I can say. I'm, I'm locked. 
Uh, I can't wait for this episode 10 to come out, This for episode 10 to come out this week. I'm going to have a community tab poll going up soon. Uh, but I also was asking in live if you guys would be down to do a teleparty for the reunion. I think we're going to end up doing it, but I do want to gauge what you guys are going to say first. So look out for that poll. Outside of that, uh, I'm going to go edit this video and get it up to you. And I'll talk to you all in the comments. Bye. Basically, Jeremy, not Jeremy. And then I'm going to insert that clip for him. Girl, can you get out of my way? Get, come here. Come here. Let me just put you down because you're flying all over the place. Thank you all. Oh, why did I? Oh, what was that? <laughs> it was like echo on that. <laughs> what the fuck was that? <laughs> Definitions with me. Definitions. Avoided. Well, yeah, you've been listening to me. Google avoiding attachment. The gaslight to Gaslightization. I have seen an absorbent amount. Absor is that the right word? Absorbent? That's a, that just means like a lot. That one's gonna be next. Lori is a cryptic, uh, a cryptocrit. <laughs>